So in this video we are going to create this literal material that uses one mask and drives a bunch of layers to create a more natural feeling material. So as you can see it feels like it's growing. And we can even take a look at this mask here. You can see how it kind of grows into different layers as it goes. All right. So we are going to delete this. We are going to stay from zero. I'm only interested in the head for this example. So I'm going to first start with a very simple way so you can understand how this works. I'm going to make a, a folder so we can later convert this into a smart material. All right. And we are going to add a fill to this folder. It is not going to affect anything, but it is only going to have a black mask. All right. This is going to be our main mask. And on this main mask, we are going to add an anchor point. And an anchor point basically takes the data of this mask and let us use that data later on other folders or layers above. If that sounds a little bit confusing, don't worry, you will understand it in a bit. So we can rename this anchor point if you want. And we are going to create a new layer, a folder, sorry, that is going to represent our fierce layer. For this, just as an example, I'm going to use the color and green. And we are going to add a mask to the layer. And we are going to add a fill to the layer. And for the content of the fill, we are going to use the main mask point. As you can see, it gets highlighted here. So right now we have nothing. Now, if we go to the main mask and we start to paint, you will see that it is reflecting the data of the main mask to this uh, mask here. And that is basically what an anchor point is. It takes this data and you can later reference the anchor point in other layers to use that data that the anchor point contains. Cool. So now we have this. We are going to create a new layer. We can actually duplicate this whole folder. Let's make this layer two. And we are going to change the color to, let's say, a blue. And now it comes the basis of this multi-layer material uh, method. We are going to add here on the mask a levels, for example. And now we are going to play a little bit with the mask. So we can bring this in like so, just like that. And it is actually not going to work a lot because our mask is um, very sharp. So we can actually add here a filter a blur filter below the anchor point. So it takes the proper data and we are going to increase this. So now you see what is happening. Basically, this is the mask that it is being used for the green color. And with the levels, we shrink the map, the mask. And that way we only show only a little bit of blue in that part. We can do another time the same thing with layer 3 and go with a red color and we are going to shrink it even more like so and maybe play with this a bit more. Maybe you can even add more blur to this and still play with the levels. Like so. So as you can see, that is the basis of this. Now we can only paint on this main mask. 
and it will adapt the colors. As you can see, it kind of blends together and grows together. If we decrease the flow and the opacity, we will see that we start with green, we click another time, more, more and more, and then the blue starts appearing, and then the red. All right, so that's basically how this works. Cool. And now we are going to convert this into a smart material. Um, I'm actually going to uh, delete everything here. Open the mask so we don't have anything. All right. And we are going to create a smart material from this. Now you can choose drag it here and we are going to start making a rust material. Something like this. I'm going to make it a little quick so it's not going to look excellent, but I think it's going to look pretty decent. I am also going to leave you in the description a link to the documentation about anchor points if you want to read more about them. Cool. So we are going to start first by painting something here. We are going to add a paint. Uh, let's choose a nice brush for this. Maybe some dirt, something like this. And now we are going to start playing around a little bit more. Now we can come here and we are going to decrease this floor because we don't really need it with this brush. Yeah, we are going just to delete that. And now we just have this green right here. Now, if we analyze a little bit our reference, we have a little bit of light color here, and then it goes a little bit darker with more contrast, and then even darker, and then we have like these black spots here when it goes really, really into the deep of darkness. So we are going to start with our first layer. We can basically just come here and drag a rust material if you want, or you can straight up uh, use a plain color and make it more difficult for yourself. For this, we are not going to have any height because it's going to be this really light uh, layer. So we are going to adjust that a bit. We are going to make it really, really faint. We are even going to decrease the intensity of the color. And if we choose so, after we reference the anchor point, we can also add some filters. For example, if you want a blur slope or something like that, that is something that you can use. I'm going to delete these two colors and I am also going to just use the rest fine for these other two layers. So let's see what mask we have here. So this is the previous one and this is the one for the layer two, which is going to be a little bit more darker. You can increase this and as you can see, you already can see the difference between the two layers. And for this, let's see, we're going to make it a little bit more saturated like this. We are going to bring it even more in, something like so. And just increase the height a little bit. Yeah, I think something like that. actually work. Maybe less. We're going to go to the next layer. And we are going to come in a bit more with this. So let's just see what's going on here. Actually, why not to keep it more like this? 
and decrease it like so. And for that, we are going to make this here. So this takes more of a purple tone. So we are going to add a little bit of purple and decrease the saturation here. And now you can do basically whatever you want with this mask as usual. You can maybe take some spots here. And we are going to increase this. It's probably not going to look very good, but let's see what we have. So that might work. Have some spots, maybe a little bit more of contrast. Let's increase the balance. Let's try that. Right, so there goes our third layer. Maybe we can bring it in a little bit more. Again, this is what our main mask looks like. And let's actually see if we can make our fourth layer for the really dark spots. So we are going to go pretty dark and this also goes in like so and let's bring it even more something like that maybe less saturated and we are going to add a little blur for this so we don't have a really strong height and i think that's pretty much it for our bare bones brass material of course this was a really quick example just uh, take your time with this fiddle around with the different colors and now let's see how this looks if we paint a little bit more. So as you can see, it grows there. So maybe this is too much. Indeed, it is too, too much. And we are going to decrease the height level of this. Something more like so and play around with this a bit more let's not make it so obvious maybe a, a little bit lighter something like that could work for me okay so now we can actually get rid of the paint and of this with the brush the eraser and we can add a generator and again below the main mask point because this is going to take the data below it. And let's see, we have some rust. We have some dripping rust. Maybe we can try that. Do a little bit more. Let's decrease the contrast. And I don't really like this generator at all. Let's actually use maybe some dirt. Right. Let's increase the dirt level. And there we have something that looks quite natural, I will say. And we can always play with different stuff. Three planer. T level of branch. As you can see it kind of grows. That's what this multi-layer thing allows us to do. Some pretty organic feeling materials. This would be with all white, completely white mask. And you can also come here, for example, add a fill with some spots like this. And let's add this. 
and you can work with that, you can see them grow from nothingness. Maybe we can invert this, add this instead, and just have a little blur for those spots. And play with the contrast and stuff like this. So yes, that's basically how you can make a multi-layer material using anchor points to make some pretty natural materials. This is the same technique I use on this axe to make this blood. So basically, if you can imagine this, where the mask is more white, you will have like these uh, droplets. And when the mask is a little bit more gray or dark, you will have some, just some trail of blood. And it is the same technique I use here to make some rust. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, share it with someone that might find it useful. And if you have any ideas or any questions about this video, please leave a comment. And yeah, that's it for today. I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day.